Hey guys, welcome back. So lots of you are asking for this video, kind of like a top 10 tips and tricks for your official Android TV devices like the Nvidia Shield or the Mi Box. Now, some of these you may know, but I'm hoping you are going to learn something new in this video. So let's just forget the intro and let's jump right into it. Okay, so first tip, you've sideloaded an application, like for example, the Aurora Store, which is actually a great application, which allows you to access the entire Google Play Store, not just applications limited to Android TV, but the entire Google Play Store on your Android TV device. So you start this application, but really, as we can see, I'm not able to navigate around the user interface. And the reason for that is, is this particular application really does need a mouse or a touch screen to use. So how can we use it? Well, on my Nvidia Shield, when I double press the play button, we can see I actually have a virtual mouse. So using this virtual mouse, I can now click on things. I can click on the menu here, for example. I can go to settings and basically just navigate around the application using this virtual mouse. So how do we get it? Well, if you look on my downloads page, and I will leave a link in the video description, you will see there is a, a link for the mouse toggle. So you install this application onto your device. Once you install it, you need to go over to your settings, go to device preferences, scroll down, and here we can see we have accessibility. Let's click on that, scroll down, and these are the applications that require access to the accessibility service. And here is mouse toggle. Just make sure that's enabled. Once it's done, you can press the home key. Now, whenever you want to use a virtual mouse, just double press the play button. There's a virtual mouse there. And when you want to turn that off, just press the home key once. And that's how you use a virtual mouse on an Android TV device. Did you know you could actually get an official Shield TV application for your Android or for your iPhone? Now, so when you start the application for the first time, now you can just see my smartphone on the screen. Now this will do a scan of your home network and as long as your phone and your Shield are on the same network, you'll be able to see it in the list. And as we can see here, it's found my Shield TV, which has the IP address ending in 139. So let me click on that now. And we can see straight away, I can now see all of the applications installed on my device. And let's say, for example, I want to launch something, I can just click on an application and we can see that then it takes me into the application and I can now also use my phone as a virtual trackpad and also as a virtual keyboard. So if I just move my hand, we can see there goes the cursor there. So very easy to navigate around. And of course, if I want to type something, I can click here. Now I can now use the keyboard on my phone and quickly type in my website, for example, which is just bit.ly forward slash tduk, that's me, and the number is 2019. And we can see, guys, just typing on this virtual keyboard is so much quicker than selecting something using the standard remote control. So I can now use my virtual pointer and click on go. Now, the last cool thing this application can do is actually help you find your lost shield remote control. I mean, who doesn't lose the remote control, you know, behind the sofa, under the telly, or this is very easy to lose, guys. So how can we find it? Well, the great thing is actually built into this application. If you click on the hamburger menu in the top right, we can see there's actually an option there which says find my remote. So I can now click on that and then click on start. And then within a few seconds, we hear that and you should now be able to find your remote control so that i think it really is a great feature of this application and let me turn that off so if you do ever lose your remote control you could always use this application to find it next up we have how you can use a custom launcher with widget support on your android tv device i mean just look how nice that looks guys we've got a, a nice weather widget up here i can scroll down here are all of my applications I can create folders to organize my content. I can even password protect folders as we can see here. I can create sections. So here's my section for streaming and so on and so forth. Now to change your default launcher to a custom launcher, it does require a couple of steps, which I have done a dedicated video for. So if you want to do that on your device, again, do have a look at the video description for a direct link to this video on how you can do that. Next up we have, did you know you could actually play Google Stadia, which is now actually free for two months on your Nvidia Shield Pro with the standard remote control. You don't need to use any special Stadia controller or anything like that. I can now start enjoying all of these games free for two months on my Nvidia Shield. And we can see guys, performance wise, that's performing really nicely. And let me do a, a melee attack. 
Uh, take that. Um, now, I did actually do an in-depth video on this. Uh, so do check out my channel if you want to see that. Uh, but essentially, we're going to use a specially modified version of Chromium. And through that browser, we can now access all of these games. Here you can see I'm using the standard remote control. I can navigate around. So let's say I want to play this uh, racing game. Let me click on that. I can now click on select. Now officially this only works on the Stadia device and a handful of phones and compatible Chromecast devices. It doesn't work natively on the Shield itself. This is why we have to use this particular workaround, but let's click on that. And we can see guys, it looks actually pretty good. Um, how do I accelerate? It's this one here. Okay, so here I am playing Google Stadia on my Nvidia Shield Pro and it's looking pretty good guys um so graphics wise looks good sounds really good now input lag of course it's not going to be instantaneous but we can see it's not really affecting my uh driving uh not too much anyway now as with all cloud streaming platforms or streaming services you may notice some compression and some artifacts uh, in the graphics but uh, to be honest guys it doesn't look uh, too bad at all and to be fair, the fact that you can enjoy all of these games, well, nine of these games directly on our NVIDIA Shield or really any other Android device for free, um, I still think that's uh, pretty impressive. And whether you like it or not, I think it's safe to say that cloud-based game streaming is definitely going to be the future. So that's the next cool thing we can do on our NVIDIA Shield Pro, which is to enjoy Google Stadia for free using the standard NVIDIA Shield game controller. Now, let me just take this opportunity to say a massive thanks to all of the new members of my channel. Your support really does mean a lot. And if any of you guys want to sign up, I'm doing a special promotion for the first 100 members, whereby all of you can join my private chat group. And in this chat group, we can talk about stuff, we can provide support to each other, and we can even share our APKs. So some of those applications, some of those toolboxes I'm working on, you guys can get early access to them so if that sounds of interest to you do have a look out for the join button thank you now for this tip I would say is a little bit on the advanced side we're going to make some system changes to really improve the UI performance the user interface performance of our official Android TV device now to do that if you just go over to your device preferences and let's click on about let's scroll down and what I want to do here is where it says build number we want to press the select button on this seven times so let's do that now one, two, three, and we get the message there. You are now four steps or four clicks from being a developer. So let's keep on pressing that select button. There we go, it says we're now a developer. So what this actually means is this opens up a hidden menu for developer options. Now, just a quick and serious disclaimer here, guys. I highly recommend you don't mess about with the things inside the developer options if you don't know what you're doing because making some changes in there could cause some serious issues on your device. So don't mess about unless you know what you're doing. Let's press the back button once. Let's scroll down again. And we can see we now have this developer options menu. So let's open that up. Let's scroll down. Now, if you ever wanted to make an ADB connection over the network onto your device, this is how you do it. You would enable the developer options first, and then you will enable this network debugging. So let me turn mine on as well. So this just means you can make ADB connections over the network to your device. But what we're actually looking for in here is how to improve the performance of the user interface. Let's keep going down. And here we can see we have three options, which is your Windows animation scale, your transition animation scale, and your animated duration scale. Now, all of these by default are set to one times, but if you really want to maximize the performance of your device, you don't really care about animations, I can click on this and I can say off. Now, before I do that, let me just show you the difference it actually makes. So, so let's say, for example, this was actually at five times. Can you see how slowly that closes? Because it's now taking five times as long to close that animation. Let's go back to the default, which is one times. So this is currently the default setting. So we can see it slides back fairly quickly. But again, if you really want the maximum performance, I'm going to go for this. And watch how quickly it disappears. You can see, I mean, you basically you can't even see the animation because, again, you've now turned that off. Similarly for this, let's also turn that off. And lastly for this one here, let's turn that off. So now if I press the home key, everything should just seem that little bit snappier because 
you're not really waiting for those animations to load or for things to open. And we can see that it does actually feel a lot snappier now. Just clicking on things, opening menus, everything just opens up instantaneously. So next up we have how you can attach a USB drive or an SSD drive to your NVIDIA Shield, but then partition that into two separate partitions. One partition for your internal storage, then a completely separate external partition that you can then use on your Shield or really any other device. The internal partition is used just for your applications, so you can install applications to it, you can move applications to it, and the external storage is used as a typical USB drive, which you can then move from device to device. So for you to do that process, I will leave a link in the video description on how you can do that. Next up, we have customizing the screensavers on your Android TV device. Now, I don't just mean any screensavers. I mean the official Aerial Dream screensavers that you have on the Apple TV devices. Let's start that up. Now, when you start this application, we can see the application has a very basic layout. We have four different sources. So we have the screensavers from 2015, Apple TV, 2017, 2018, and 2019. Now, when you click on one of the video sources, we have options to disable that source. We can have a random video from that source. We can say we only want to see daytime videos from there or nighttime videos, or even you can base it with your local time. So if it's nighttime for you, you'll see the nighttime video. And if it's daytime, you'll then see the daytime video, but I'll leave mine as nighttime. Then for the other three, you can choose whether you want to see a full HD or 4K or even disable. So I'll leave mine as full HD for the remaining uh, three video sources. And let's click on test. Just look at that guys, just amazing picture quality, really calm, really peaceful, and definitely some of the best screensavers I've ever seen. Now to actually apply these onto your Android TV device, if you click on your screensaver options, let's click on that. And we can see we can now actually customize which screensaver our Nvidia Shield will actually use. So let's click on screensaver, and let's change that to Aerial Dream. And you can also specify when the screensaver starts, so we'll leave it as five minutes for now. And here you can specify when your device goes to sleep, and that's pretty much it guys. You can now start enjoying all of these amazing 4K Apple TV screensavers. And here we can just see London, home of Tech Doctor UK. So definitely guys. And that's all for this video guys. Many thanks for watching. I hope you found at least some of those tips and tricks useful. If you did, please like the video. If you want to see more stuff like this, then please do subscribe and hit the notification bell. As always, I always appreciate your likes, your shares, your comments. So do let me know what you think. Leave me a comment below and I'll hopefully catch up with you guys real soon. Thanks.